Newton's third law of motion. Now let's explore Newton's third law of motion. Consider this. Any time a force is exerted on an object, that force has to be caused by another object. That is to say, there must be two objects involved to have a force. Imagine if you're trying to push on somebody, but they keep moving away so you can't really push on them, then you can't really exert a force on them. So they need to be there pushing back. They have to be present for you to be able to even exert a force. Newton's third law states, whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal force in the opposite direction on the first object. So if you imagine our cat lying here on the table, the cat exerts a force onto the table in a downward direction, and the force exerts an equal, sorry, the table exerts an equal force on the cat in an upward direction. They are equal and opposite. We can restate Newton's third law in another way. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Remember, forces or actions are always applied between pairs of objects. It's important that to correctly apply the third law, you have to consider the forces as being exerted on different objects by different objects. Make sure you don't use them as if they were acting on the same object. They just add up to zero. Here we have two forces acting on, as, as the man does a press up in this diagram. He is pushing down on the floor with his hands and the floor is pushing up on his hands. Rocket propulsion is a great example of Newton's third law. In rockets, hot gases from combustion spew out of the tail of the rocket at high speeds. The reaction force is what propels the rocket. Notice that the rocket doesn't need anything like the Earth to push against. It's the hot gases that are pushing against the rocket and the rocket that are pushing against the gases that make propulsion possible. We know this is also working because when you're out in space, you can still accelerate the rocket. The only thing that's there for the rocket to push against is the hot gases that are coming out of its combustion chamber. Earlier on, we introduced the idea of subscripts to keep track of the properties of different objects and to be able to apply them effectively in, in equations. Here, we want to continue with that idea, but we want to do it on forces, and forces, as we've discussed, involve two objects. So we want to use two subscripts. The first subscript we want to use on the force describes the object that the force is being exerted on. The second one is the source of that force. So let's have a look at this diagram. Here we have a person walking along the ground. In order for them to move, they have to exert a horizontal force on the ground. Let's look at that force. Force on the ground by the person. At the same time, we have Newton's third law, which tells us that there's no way that that force can be exerted without an equal and opposite force being exerted. And in this case, the ground is exerting a force on the person. So, force on person by ground. Let's test your understanding of Newton's third law. Here's a question. An object of mass M sits on a flat table. The earth pulls on this object with force Mg, which we call the action force. What is the reaction force? A, the table pushing up on the object with force mg. B, the object pushing down on the table with force mg. C, the table pushing down on the floor with force mg. Or D, the object pulling upward on the earth 
with force mg? Well, first of all, let's think about this. We've already got something pulling down on, um, on the object. The earth is pulling down on the object. So if we're going to have a reaction force, it has to be in the opposite direction. Let's look at some of these answers. The table pushing up on the object with force mg, that's definitely in the right direction. It's upward. The second one is the object pushing down on the table with force mg. Well, as we said, the reaction force has to be going in the opposite direction. And the table pushing down on the floor with force mg, that's going the wrong direction as well. We need something going up. So we have two possibilities. The second thing we need to remember is that there's a symmetry when we look at the force, two forces. We have two objects. If we remember the person and the ground from our um, earlier explanation, we had the force on the ground by the person was equal and opposite to the force of the ground on the person. So if we look at this, we hear ground, person, person, ground. What about this? We have earth on object. So what is going to counter that? We have earth on the object. And the only thing that could possibly be would be the, the force of the object on the earth. So if the earth pulls on the object, the object pulls on the earth with the opposite direction. So the only possible answer then is D.